I'm Graham Wolf. I'm Ben Wolf. I'm Joshua Graham. And I'm Jack Ray. And this is our presentation on Fallujah. <laughs> the town of Fallujah is uh, roughly 40 miles away from Baghdad, uh, west of Baghdad, and it's used as a major transport link going to and from Turkey. And in Iraq, it's actually known as the City of Mosques. The United States occupation of Fallujah began in April 2003, uh, one month after the beginning of the invasion of Iraq, um, and began as part of Operation Freedom, in which the coalition force was made up of United States, United Kingdom, Australia and Poland, and President George Bush and Prime Minister Tony Blair at the time. Uh, so the, the, the mission of the coalition uh, was to disarm Iraq of weapons or mass destruction, to end Saddam Hussein's support for terrorism and to free the Iraqi people. However, on the evening of April the 28th, a crowd of roughly 200 people defied the curfew that was put in place by the Americans and gathered outside the secondary school uh, in protest of it being closed by the military. Uh, soldiers from the 82nd Airborne stationed on the roof actually fired upon the crowd, resulting in 17 deaths of civilians and over 70 injured. Uh, a protest was later held uh, in result of this, in which two more civilians were also killed by uh, US forces. Sorry. On March the 31st, 2004, uh, four American private military contractors working for Blackwater USA were conducting a delivery service for our food caterers and were abducted by the Iraqi insurgents. They were dragged out of their cars, beaten and then set on fire, lastly to be hung on what is now known as the Blackwater Bridge overlooking a river in Iraq. The US can also be seen as liberators of Iraq uh, for many reasons, such as... On the 31st of March 2004, Iraqi insurgents attacked a US convoy full of uh, US contractors that were driving through Fallujah. Grenades were thrown, and the contractors were pulled from their cars, beaten, burned, and then mutilated. They were then dragged through the street by that gathering mob, and then hung on this bridge here in Fallujah. The, uh, the ordeal was filmed by locals and was quickly made available for the world media. The media um, was then shown across America and called a public outcry. Um, this the public outcry caused immense political pressure on the US government at the time, forcing them to, do, to take action against this injustice. As well as the public outcry, the liberation of Fallujah was also of big military importance to the war in Iraq. There was estimated 4,000 to 5,000 insurgents in Fallujah at the time. And Due to its location, only 40 miles from Baghdad, this was a vital position to take. On the 1st of April 2004, Deputy Director of Operations for the US military promised an overwhelming response from the Blackwater deaths, stating, we will pacify this city. Furthermore, there was an unsuccessful attempt to capture Fallujah by US forces. This was the largest combat mission since the declaration of the end of major hostilities, which resulted in 20 US Marines killed, 184 insurgents killed, and between 572 to 616 civilians killed. On May 1st, 2004, US forces turned over any operations to the new form uh, Fallujah Brigade, armed with US weapons and equipment, and were under the command of Mohammed Latif. This group later dissolved and turned all US weapons and equipment to insurgents. This promised a second attack on Fallujah. Operation Phantom Fury was the reputed death of over 1,350 insurgent fighters. Approximately 95 American troops were killed and 560 wounded. After the success, uh, successful recapture of the city, US forces discovered a room in which they claimed to find evidence of beheading and bomb-making factories, which were shown by the media as evidence of Fallujah's important role in insurgency against US forces. As well as we can see US being liberators of Iraq, we can also see them as being destructors of Iraq, as what we will talk about now. There are a couple of issues that we feel need to be addressed in relation to the re-invasion of Fallujah following the death of the four private contractors who are working for Blackwater. 
For example, was there really a just and legitimate reason, or did the Americans just succumb to political and media pressure? Were there war crimes committed by the USA to my invasion into Fallujah, and if so, what kind? And uh, was it actually necessary to take into account the peace, uh, percentage of peaceful civilians which actually still lived there? Were the soldiers aware of their targets? It's thought that many men, women and children were killed as a result of the attack, and that's one of the reasons why the, why the invasion has caused so much controversy. Now, the city had a population of approximately 300,000 people. Around two-thirds of that population were evacuated prior to the second assault. However, the American soldiers were specifically told that everybody still left in the city was a threat to America and could be considered insurgents. So following from that logic, um, the American soldiers would assume that there were 100,000 terrorists in Fallujah at the time. Was it necessary to effectively wipe out Fallujah because four con contractors were killed? Or did the Americans' egos come into play and think that they could do what they want? Now, at first the United States denied all allegations in relation to the use of white phosphorus in Fallujah. A white phosphorus is a napalm-like substance which burns at extremely high temperatures when exposed to oxygen and has also been known to emit toxic fumes. Uh, the law on the use of incendiary weapons clearly states that it is prohibited in all circumstances to make the civilian population as such individual civilians or civilian objects the object of attack by incendiary weapons. And this also includes if there's a military objective located in a concentration of civilians. It is still illegal to use incendiary weapons on that. The US, of course, have now admitted to the use of white phosphorus following overwhelming evidence. So according to the Chemical Weapons Act of 1996, it's completely illegal to manufacture, uh, possess and use chemical weapons. Uh, white phosphorus is a chemical weapon because it's, of its toxic capabilities and there are still repercussions today from some of the effects that it's caused. Now, American soldiers were given orders from their commanding officers that any male between the ages of 15 to 50 could be considered a legitimate military threat and anybody who fitted in that category was uh, to be shot on site and they were shoot to kill. Some may consider that Fallujah was a form of pseudo revenge due to the killings of the Blackwater and murder, due to the killings of the Blackwater uh, mission, and even the 9 11 attacks that affected so many Americans. The specific bombs which were used had such a large blast radius that women and children were often affected by them, and this also caused a large amount of civilian deaths. <coughs> In conclusion, we can see that there are both arguments for and against the invasion of Fallujah by US forces, um, but that we think there are definitely more arguments against the invasion of Fallujah by US forces as well as the behaviour of the US forces. Um, public outcry is still uh, relative in today's world. We've still got uh, the issues of 9-11, uh, the recent death of Osama bin Laden. All these help to fuel uh, US forces' emotive feelings. Um, but we think what is one of the most crucial things is that it's necessary that any potential war crimes committed by the invading force, so for example we've got US invading Fallujah, um, that they are fully investigated by the correct agency and fully investigated by the correct authority, i.e. the International Court of Justice, International Court System, um, rather than just um, simply pushed aside as one quote was said, you know, they are the biggest criminal, um, but they also help to set up the criminal justice system. Thank you for watching.